Welcome back to another video. Hope you are having a great day. And today with a KVM from Digit Now, which is a brand that probably you already know. Now, this is a two times two KVM, which means that I will be able to control two computers in two displays and each computer will be able to output two HDMI signals. You can see right over here all the ports and I will explain a little bit better and we will see how it works. Now this is compatible with any operating system. Even if you don't have an operating system you will have a HDMI signal output and this will be compatible. But in case you are using Windows 10 or Windows 11 don't forget to check out Keyspan where you can find budget official OM keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description it will get a bit cheaper. So just in case I will leave the link down below just next to the digital now KVM. Now inside the package we will find the Digit Now KVM and in terms of build quality it's quite well constructed. It's a metallic sheet right over here, aluminium I would guess and it's solid. So in terms of durability we have no issues whatsoever. Also for cooling great and in terms of the design itself it looks good. It has these rubber feet right over here. This metal sheet covers the black cover so I do believe that it looks in my opinion of course really nice on a setup just below our display. Inside the package we will also have the remote control that we will see how it works and there's also paperwork, the USB cables and the HDMI cables and the power adapter. So everything that we need to plug and play this device to our computers and run it without any issues whatsoever. In terms of the front interface it has all or almost everything that we require. Now I will explain how we will be able to read this and at the back just a glimpse right over there we'll have two HDMI inputs for each computer and two USB ports for each computer so that we are able to control the KVM. Then we also have a USB 2.0 so I would suggest that if you are transferring big files do not use the USB 2.0 or it will take quite a while. This is great for any kind of small size storage if you want to pass documents and things like that but huge video files like the ones that I'm recording at this moment then it would take almost forever over USB 2.0. So this is the only limitation that I could find in terms of the storage speed if we want to use full storage. We also have two USB ports for mouse and keyboard and finally two HDMI outputs which will go for each of the displays and one 3.5 five millimeter audio jack. And now let's take a look on how it works. And now with the setup example on the digit now KVM two times two, which means that we can have two computers with two display outputs and showing on two monitors. Now at this moment I've got one Windows computer right over here that I, we can use with the both displays but we can also use my MacBook and if I press the switch button right over here it will change to the MacBook. One thing to have in mind is that this delay it's more on the display side or the TV side and these LG displays take a long time even to switch from here on the display port to HDMI so just have that in mind it doesn't have to do with the KVM itself. With the same KVM and different displays you will get completely different results. Now I'm going to close these windows because we also have a USB drive connected to the KVM and it will go from Windows to Mac OS and I will receive those messages because it will unplug from Mac OS and go to Windows. Now at this moment we can check out right over here and we can use both displays with the second computer. Now talking about the second computer if we look at the interface of the digit now we will see that we have computer number one online and computer number two online. So two computers Windows and Mac OS and we can use any other operating system. We also have the information right over here and this is probably a small limitation that we get used to it but the information means that the computer number two is showing on both displays and if I press right over here the computer number one will show on both displays and if it had more LEDs it would be able to tell us in a different way but I do believe that the simplicity is also a factor so just a note that on some KVMs that we have reviewed we have a lot of buttons this one here is a bit more simple and on the budget side as well. Now the only thing that I can do with the interface basically is the swap between PC number one and PC number two but to lift that limitation we have the uh, remote control and we can also do some shortcuts on the keyboard that I will show you in just a 
few moments. Now, the first two buttons that we have will do exactly the swap function. So it's on PC number one, but I can press PC number two right over here and it will swap to PC number two. Once again, it takes a little bit more, especially when we change from Windows to Mac OS. Now, we also have some options right over here. And one of the options to me is very important because I use it on a daily basis. And probably most of the people working for a KVM want that feature as well, which is to be able to use Mac OS on one side and Windows on the other one, or Linux and Windows or vice versa. It doesn't matter. And the key that we need to press to achieve that is this one right over here on the middle, which is the swap button which will give me the option to have one computer on one side and one computer on the other side. Now, if we take a look, we will see that we have the four LEDs turned on right now. So I've got computer number one and computer number two on display number one and display number two. And if I want, I can just press the swap button as we saw we had Windows right over here and Mac OS right over there. And at this moment, is exactly the opposite. So Mac OS will go right over here and Windows right over there. And if I press PC number one right now, what it will do is it will change back to Windows. Now let's press on swap once again so that we can have one operating system on each of the screens. And there we go, Windows right over here and right on this screen we have Mac OS. One other feature that it has, and it's important to me as well, is the ability to work simultaneously with both operating systems on both displays, which we have seen. But if we want to have a task on one and a task on the other one, if I move my mouse right now, I can just uh, do whatever I want to do on Windows right over here. And then when I have a task doing rendering a video or whatnot, I want to go to that screen, but I don't want to uh, change um, the displays and whatnot. So what I can do right now now is to select that I want USB from PC to working. So I just need to press USB right over here and it will give me the USB on this site, which is really awesome as well. The rest of the buttons basically are the input source for PC1 and PC2. So we can change between all and other. And we also have the option for the sound output. So for example, if I want to hear the sound from PC2, I will need to change to channel 2. And if I want to hear the sound from PC1, I will need to change the channel to PC number one. And basically that's the way that it works. Now, there is also some shortcuts right over here that I want to share with you, because if I'm working with the interface, probably I will have the remote here, but it's easier if I'm on the keyboard to do some shortcuts on the keyboard as well. And I will use a key, which is the scroll key. But if you don't have the scroll key on the manual, it says that you can change to a control key, which is usually the keys that we work with KVM. So don't worry about this scroll key. But in this particular case, if I press scroll, scroll, it will give this pip. And if I press number one, it will give me computer number one on both displays. And you already seen right over here, the LED indication that. And if I do scroll, scroll, number two, it will give me the, uh, the computer number two, which is the Mac OS right over here on both displays. And there we go, Mac OS on both displays. And now if we do scroll lock, scroll lock, and number three, we will press the uh, swap button and we will have Windows on one side, Mac OS on the other side, and we will have the mouse on the Windows side. But if we do, for example, scroll lock, scroll lock, and number four, what we can see, first of all, is that I will have the Windows right over here on this side, and I will have the Mac OS on the other side, and the mouse right now is on Mac OS. And if I do the reverse, scroll lock, scroll lock, number three, it will change, and it will focus the mouse and keyboard and accessories back on my Windows machine. So we have a lot of options to dig out between the interface, the remote, and there are a few more shortcuts on the keyboard, but these are the essential ones that I do believe that on a daily basis, as a user of a KVM switch that I do, these are the ones that we will be able to use more. And probably one important one is that if I press Alt twice, I will have my keyboard right over here. And if I press it twice, sorry, twice, 
I will have my keyboard right over here without changing the strings. So probably this information is useful as well because it's one of the shortcuts that I use the most and I was forgetting about that one. And that is it, easy as we just seen. Easy to connect, so we just need to connect the HDMI cables, the USB cables, and that is it. We can turn on our computers and then we can swap between Mac OS and Windows or Windows and Linux or whatever operating system that you are using. Now, you saw the limitations that I did find. In terms of the reading, I would say that yes, compared to other more advanced KVMs that we have seen right over here, yes, it has that limitation, but I do believe that we will get used to it. And it's just a matter of time until we start using it and we know exactly what's going on. And the other limitation is basically on the USB 2.0. By the way, I was talking about the limitation right over here, but we will not have any limitation with the remote control. And usually what I do on a daily basis, I do use the keyboard shortcuts, which we can also use on the digit now right over here. So I believe that those limitations are not that hard. And having in consideration what we get for the price that we pay, it's not a bad deal at all. I will leave the link down below so that you can check all the specifications and details. Hope that the video was helpful in some way. And if it was, don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.